we are going to begin without our pillows, just so we have them though, and easy seated. So you will just cross your legs to wherever feels good, straighten up your spine, or we raise up our arms, take a deep breath, close your eyes. And if you would like to bring your arms above your head, hands together to heart center. And instead of setting an intent for today's practice, I really want us to try and sit here in silence for a few minutes and become aware of our breathing without cues, how you're breathing, how it feels. And then also, if you can, I'd like for you to try and be able to slow your thoughts down to where you can concentrate on feeling your heartbeat. So I'm gonna try not to talk during this, but when I've got my hands together, I tend to always put my thumbs against my heart in this to try and feel. But just begin to breathe as you normally would or however feels good. And with each exhale, try and focus on whether or not you can feel your heart. And it doesn't even have to be about you touching on the outside of your body, just feeling it pump within your body. Just gonna take a little bit of break and focus. Try when you're breathing to remember to keep your shoulders down from your ears. Try to keep mindful about what is grounding you on the ground, what's touching your mat. While we're here, I do have something I want to read to you guys, just to think. The heart chakra is the center of all the chakras. In theory, it is what helps us transition from physical to our spiritual. The previous chakras ground us. So our root, the sacral, solar plexus, all of these are grounding chakras. And then we get to the heart and it becomes spiritual. And the element for the heart chakra is air. And I thought how fitting we breathe air. We need oxygen in our blood to be able to fuel our heart, to keep it pumping, to keep all of us alive. The heart begins to bring the element of air into our subtle selves. And that begins to give way to the mental and spiritual chakras that continue up. And and looking at my yoga notes, I was looking at wheel pose last night. I don't know why I'd completely forgotten that wheel pose in Sanskrit is chakrasana, chakrasana. Missy, you might have to help me with that, but it's the pose of the chakra. So allowing your heart to open up. And that's what we're going to do today in today's practice. Really be mindful of this space where our heart is not only in front of us, but also behind us. Your next inhale, try and be mindful on your exhale that it's twice as long as your inhale. It doesn't have to be counted. Just try and make your exhale twice as big as what you're taking in.
in our practice today, I focus a lot of this on the heart chakra and opening up our hearts and these awesome stretches that are heart openers. And the mantra for this chakra is I love. And we can think of thousands, if not millions of things that we love. But I really want us to try and take all that love that we give to everybody else, to ourselves. Remember in this practice today, if something hurts, stop. Something doesn't feel right, stop. If you do have heart problems, this might not be the best practice to start out with today. When you're ready, release your hands, bring them down, grab your pillows. And we're going to go into recline butterflies. You're just gonna stack them however you would like, long ways, half ways, and we're just going to lean back on them like this. So you can either start by going ahead and doing your legs in a butterfly, which you're going to do soles of your feet together, and then we're just gonna lean back on our pillows. Oh. And have our arms to either side of us in a T. When you're in this pose, once you're where it feels good, try and ever so slightly bring your shoulder blades together. Bring your shoulders down from your ears. Let your knees fall out. When you breathe, allow your rib cage to rise and allow your lungs to fill up with air. Be aware of every movement, even if it's a little movement in your toes of what's going on. Allow gravity to be your friend here. On your next exhale, try and push those feet together and bring those heels up a little closer to your torso. It gives you a little bit more of a stretch. Your hips and inside your thighs here. And again, if anything hurts, show yourself some grace. And do what feels good. Relax your shoulders, relax your jaw, close your eyes if you'd like. If you have your eyes closed, relax them, let them fall back. This is a little too much for you to have your arms out to the sides. That's fine. You can always bring your hands back to your torso. Put your left arm over your heart, your right arm over your belly. You can feel your inhale and exhale, the rise and fall of your stomach. Feel your heartbeat. And if you can, try and keep those arms out. We really want to open up the space in our bodies and chest. Again, be mindful about your shoulders. Try and keep them down and away from your ears. Remember to 
breathe. Know what is not serving you. If you have raising thoughts or you're thinking about something else. Pretty sure it's not yoga related. It's not going to help you in yoga. So be aware of what is serving you right now while you are present here on your mat. Remember to breathe. Slowly open your eyes. Slowly bring your knees together and hug them into your chest. Be careful if you're propped up on pillows that you don't roll off. Take a minute here if you like. Breathe. Slowly bring yourself up. And we are going to move these pillows out of the way just for a little bit. And do some cat cows. And if you would like to do them sitting, you're more than welcome to. You're going to bring your shoulders back. And this traditional cat cow. Make sure your knees are under your hips and wrists are under shoulders and elbows and find that neutral spine. Draw your back up with your inhale. Drop your neck down in your head and exhale in a cow. And in these, don't be so worried about whether or not your back is neutral or you're doing the correct cat and cow. Do what feels good. So if you want to move around and stretch out some, your body will tell you what you need. Let's do four of these. After that fourth exhale, find neutral spine. If you are towards the front of your mat, walk yourself back just a bit. And we are gonna come into melting heart. So in this pose, you still want the alignment that you find in neutral spine, but we are going to walk our hands out in front of us. And if you can, to where your heart touches the mat. In this, just like a child's pose, you want your forehead to touch the mat, not your chin. And while you're here, be mindful of your shoulders and your hips. Push back with your arms and your hips. Let your shoulders fall to the ground. If you can, try not to keep them up by your ears. Feel that stretch in your spine. Remember to breathe. This is too much. A modification for this is you can definitely put your bolster or your pillows here and lean over them like this into this pose. But don't let your hips sink back like you would in child's pose. You want your hips to be up 
under, or the knees to be under your hips. Then drop your chest. Walk your hands out a little bit further than where they're at now. Feel that deep stretch under your arms. If you're having trouble, push down with the tops of your feet into your mat and your knees and push back with your hips. Be mindful if one arm is supporting more weight than the other arm. Be mindful of your hips if they're stacked or one side's up higher than the other. Remember to breathe. Two more deep breaths here. On your second exhale, look up at your hand. Go ahead and drop your elbows down to the ground. Bring your arms and hands slowly back towards your torso. Remove your pillows from your mat. We're gonna stay here on our knees, but now we're gonna come into, I'm not sure what this is called, what position this is called. I coined it straight jacket, which might not be the best name for a yoga pose, but I'm not really sure what else you would call it. But in this pose, I'll come this way so you guys can see. Just like in Melting Heart, you're gonna feel this throughout your arms, but we really wanna open up the shoulders. So to get into this pose, go ahead and come onto your belly. And we're going to take our right arm, once you're here, bring it under, your body so that you're resting not on it but that it's under you and then you're going to take your left arm cross it just like that and then you'll find this little sweet spot in your shoulders and we want to push down with our hands before we really get in the stretch so while you're here hands down if you can and push and you should feel that stretch in between your shoulders if you do then you're in the right spot. So now from here, go ahead and relax your feet. Relax your back and let your head fall down so that it rests. Your chin should be resting close to the floor on top of your left upper arm. Breathe into this. I have my palms up now. It makes the stretch a little bit easier. But if you want that extra, you can, again, turn your palms down the floor and push down while you're allowing your chin and head to relax. You'll feel that stretch deep in your shoulders. Not only are we working on the front part, I guess, area, we're also trying to allow the space to open up in our back. We forget that the circular thing, our bodies. Remember to breathe. Two more deep breaths. Slowly on your second exhale, lift your head. Unlace your arms, bring them to your side. Like this. And we are going to 
do locust and then we're going to go and do the other side so while we're here lift up bring your arms behind you we're going to zipper up those legs and feet you want your arms to try and be I guess it should be going the other way try and be parallel with the floor not at any kind of angle if you'd like you can reach back in the bow if you'd like whatever you do relax your shoulders Keep them away from your ears and remember to breathe. Two more deep breaths. And relax your arms out in front of you again on the floor. And this time we are going to take our left hand and put it under, all right, yes. And then our right hand crosses over the top. So now your chin should be resting on your right upper arm. Before we get into this pose like we were, go ahead again, push down the ground with your fingertips, just your fingertips. There should be a stretch right here in your shoulder blade, right here. This area like that tenses up, we can't ever get. This is what we're trying to get out. Push down and relax. Flip your palms if you'd like. If you're like this in this pose to where it looks like you're Arms could be double chins. Bring your arms back so that they're under your chest. Maybe that looks good. And let your body fall. You might notice one side's a little bit easier or harder for you. It's normal. Just relax. If anything hurts, give yourself some grace. You notice that one shoulder feels like it's kind of tweaked in this. Relax the other shoulder. Breathe into this and allow both lungs to fill up with air. And to get all of that out. If you'd like to rock back and forth a little bit, if you feel like you can support yourself in that, you can. I know yen is supposed to be stillness, but the heart is not ever still while we're living. Two more deep breaths. Slowly bring your arms under you. And we are going to go back into child's pose. Child's pose, you want your big toes to kiss. And then this, or in tadpole, I guess for you, and is what we call it. I want you to try and bring, instead of your normal child's pose with your knees and hips aligned, try and bring this child's pose as wide leg as you can, not to where you're doing the splits, but to at least try and get your knees as close to the edge of the mat as you can. 
and stretch those arms out in front of you. The goal in child's pose is to relax. And then have your hips drop down to your heels. Let your heart touch the mat. Be aware of your breath. One more breath here. On your exhale, grab your pillow. We're going to do <clears throat> supported wild child. So for this, you may need a pillow, you may not. Let me show you what this looks like and how we're gonna get into it. So we're going to be, <clears throat> Putting our first left arm on the ground, and we're going to rest on our left side. Okay, so once you get this, you should have your left cheek, your left arm should be behind you, and if you need a pillow, it's going to go behind your back. You're going to lift up this right knee, keep the left foot flexed on the floor. Bring your right arm up into the air and gently look at your right fingertips. Use that right leg for some resistance so that you can stay into this pose. Relax your head, but you still want to keep your gaze, at least the corners of your eyes, looking at that those right fingertips. Be mindful of your body in this. Make sure that you're not under engaging your abs in this. You need everything that's on the floor to be engaged in this pose. Because what we want to do is open up this area in our chest. It's almost like a bird getting its wings. Allow all that air into your rib cage. So the chakras are supposed to be part of our subtle bodies. And in yoga teacher training, we learned about the nadis. This pose is supposed to open up your heart and lung nadis to allow this energy. Engage your core. Stay on that left side. But use that right bent leg for support. Slowly on your next exhale, bring your right arm down to your side. Drop your right knee and roll back to center, or roll back to the ground. Once you're here, back to the ground, you're gonna do Spider-Man. So you're gonna make your arms in this field goal position. You wanna rest on your left cheek and bring, <coughs> excuse me, bring your right leg to a 90 degree angle. Almost like your hands are up here in this goal pose pose. You want your left leg to stay straight behind you. So this is Spider-Man. You'd like to lift up your left heel behind you and flex your foot, feel free. Try and keep both feet flexed on the floor, or flexed rather. And allow gravity to work. Be mindful of your shoulders that they're not up by your ears.
I'm just going to relax through this pose just for a minute before we do the other side. Two more breaths. On your second exhale, go ahead and roll to your, well first bring your right arm out beside you on the floor. Roll to your right side. Bring that left knee up. Before you bring your left arm up, check in with everything. Check in with your hips. Make sure that they are in somewhat alignment with your shoulders. Bring this left arm up and up. Bring it back almost as if you were going to touch your hands together, clasp them behind your back, but we're just reaching back. Keep your gaze, if you can, to where you can see those fingertips. Relax your neck though, don't get a cramp. Relax your shoulders from your ears. Flex that right foot. It may help also to give you a little bit more balance if you bring your left knee, bring your foot closer to your torso. So draw your knee up just a little bit more. Sometimes that can give you a little bit more balance. And if it's too much to look at those fingertips and it's making this side hurt, you don't have to. Do what feels good. Try and find your edge without hurting. Make sure that left shoulder isn't drawing up towards your chin. Remember to breathe. Allow all that air. Move those wings. Two more deep breaths. On that second exhale, slowly bring that left hand down to the ground. Slowly drop that left knee and slowly roll back onto your belly. And then bring our arms back up to that goalpost position. And this time we're going to bring our left knee up beside us. This is almost like a half frog. I guess. I'm not really trying to really stretch anything in this except for releasing what we just have in our shoulders and just giving ourselves some grace. So really allow yourself to relax in this position. Be mindful if you're resting on one hip, one side of your body. Where your elbow should be in this goalpost pose. When, if you look, open your eyes and look, your eyes should meet your elbow crease. So where your biceps and your um, forearm 
or it should be right about where your eyes can see. It should be pretty much a straight line. You want to check on your alignment in that. Be mindful of your shoulders so you don't allow them back up towards your ears. Go back to the beginning of practice and think about your heart beating. Slowly from here, we're going to walk our hands back for your legs in. And while you're here at your knees, put your hands down in front of you. You want them to be shoulder width distance apart. Now bring your feet behind your hands. Slowly drop your hips. You can slowly turn out your feet. We are going to come into Moasana squat. While we're here, this is a great hip opener, but also one thing that really helps us in this pose is our strength in our torso and chest up here. So be aware of how much muscle you have to use to keep your balance in this. Be aware of how strong your shoulders are. Breathe. From here, we're going to come into camel. So on your next exhale, come down on your knees. I showed this assist or modification last week. Camel's intense. It's, it is a back bend. So one thing to make it a little bit easier is you can, instead of doing the back bend like this, you can just sit down on your blocks or your pillows like this. The biggest takeaway from this we do today in camel, whether you do full camel, like in an ashtanga, this, or you are down on your pillows. Whatever you're doing, your heart and your chest need to be up. So wherever you find that sweet spot, wherever your practice is taking you, relax those shoulders, let your head fall back. And to get in the camel, if you want to do full camel, you have knees hip width distance apart. Hold your heels. You push up with those shoulders, drop your head back. Find the balance. Trust yourself. Use your core. Three more deep breaths.
on that exhale, if you would like to, we are going to come down to the saddle or hero's pose. That's not your thing. You can do half saddle or half hero's pose. For this, you're going to bring your feet out to the outsides of your thighs. You see our kids sitting like this a lot. So if this is not comfortable, then by all means, you have your legs in front of you and reaching back. So once we're here, okay, flex both feet. And if you would like to go into full saddle, you can bring your feet, sorry, I'll bring your feet so that they're not flexed. I'm taking your camel. And gently, gently, gently allow yourself to come back. And if you can, you can reach the floor. I can't do it right now because of my knee, but if I was going to be in a half saddle, show you guys this, it would be this and arms above your head. This is an intense stretch for your chest, for your quadriceps, your shoulders. Only going to be here just for a minute. Remember to breathe. However slowly you need to come out of this pose, go slow. Slowly bring your arms down. Slowly release your feet. While we're on our backs like this, go ahead and hug your knees back in. It's so important when you're coming out of these poses into the next pose that you go at your own speed. Yin is observing stillness. Instead of this active beating rhythm that we're so used to in life. So getting out of these poses, as long as it takes you to get into them, allow yourself just as much time to get out of them. Once you have both your knees back towards your chest, without any pillows on your mat, just rock back and forth. You feel that massage in your lower back. Take a minute. That was an intense stretch. From here, we're going to do some figure fours with our legs. So first, bring your left leg up, flex your foot, cross your right, ankle over to your knee, but not so that it's your ankle on top of your knee. You want it to be muscle on muscle in this. Reach through to your hamstring and ever so slightly push with this part of your arm, your forearm, not your elbow, this part of your arm. Push ever so slightly if you can on the fleshy part, the muscle of your right thigh. If it feels like you're straining too hard, you bring your knee in and then try. 
This, remember keep your feet flexed. This helps to release some tension in our backs and psoas muscle. Keep your feet flexed, remember to breathe. On your next exhale, release your left leg to the ground, release your right leg, shake it out a little bit, stretch, and go ahead and bring your right leg up. Flex that right foot. Gonna take your left ankle over your right knee, cross, if you want to pull the back of your thigh and push, again, ever so gently with the underside of your forearm against your thigh. You can bring your knee into your body or your lower leg, I'm sorry. So you can hug your knee in, hug your shin in, I guess. Keep those feet flexed. Let your shoulders relax. Still want that chest proud, even though we're laying on the floor. And on your next exhale, drop your right leg that you're holding. Let your left leg come down to the ground. Go ahead, stretch out as far as you can, arms above head, we're going to do a happy baby before we go into Shavasana, so happy baby, bring your legs back up. Once they're in front of you, flex your feet. Bring your hands to the insides of your feet, but you're going to hold the outsides of your feet. So you, your elbows and the insides of your knees. And it's easy in this to kind of want to roll up so that your sacrum is off the floor. Try not to do that. Try to push down with that flat part of your spine and then pull those knees down and gently, gently, gently on the outsides of your feet, pull down just a little bit. Once you're there on that flat part of your spine, instead of, I see a lot of people doing happy baby, so they're kind of bouncing up here on their shoulders almost. You really want to make sure in this pose that that flat part of your spine is on the mat, grounded. Then find what feels good for you for this pose. And rock back and forth. Make sure your baby is happy. Whenever you're ready, bring your feet back to the mat, bring your hands back to the mat. Point your toes together so that they kiss and let them fall to the outside corners of your mat.
Push the Vasana. Be mindful still of your shoulders. If they're not up. Making sure your ears aren't cold. If you'd like to place your left hand on your heart here and your right hand on your belly. Relax your jaw. Get your eyes closed. Focus on your breath. If you can, try and see if you can feel your heart beating again. And stay here just for a little bit. If you're outside, really listen to whatever's around you. If you're inside, try and focus on your breath and your heart. So in the end, we stay in Shavasana a little bit longer than other practices. The heart chakra is at the center of your chest, over your physical heart, the ring that holds your heart, your lungs, and your ribs around to your thoracic spine. We need this chakra so that we can express love, so that we can receive love, so that we know our social identity, and so we too can love others. All the body parts that are in this area that we tried to focus on today, it's a lot of muscle and a lot of damage that we unknowingly can do to ourselves through emotion, through physical and our nutrition. Regardless of that, your heart is still beating and it's not going to stop and it's always going to be there. Just like we are here. Allow yourself to be open to others so that others too can receive your gifts. When you're ready, slowly roll to your favorite side. And slowly come up into easy seated. And once we're here, we're going to bring our arms overhead, palms together to heart center. The light in me honors the light in all of you. Namaste.